Okay, we see how things worked out, that really we were supposed to get together, I think, a couple of weeks ago. That didn't work, and last week didn't work. It's just two days before Rosh Hashanah. So who better to speak about life with than the people that are involved with life every single moment of their working hour and their day. And I would imagine like you have, uh, there's rabbinical hours, there are no such thing as hours. People can call it any time that they want. I imagine that as doctors, there's really no doctor hours either. And you receive calls at all hours of the day and the night and the morning because life is, is valuable and life is important. I know that if someone's calling me at 3 o'clock in the morning, it's because their spiritual or their emotional life is teetering and they need something. So if the hospital calls you at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning or you're on call on the floor at 3 o'clock in the morning and they rush you in, that's because someone's physical life is maybe hanging by a thread and they need you to come and be a shaliach, be a messenger of the Almighty above and help to bring them that healing that they need. So life is what's on our mind right now. We tell everybody they should have a good year, they should have a year of life, they should be written in the book of life. We're going to start on Rosh Hashanah praying again and again and again. We're going to ask one thing. Zachreinu l'chaim. Remember us for life. So we kind of have to ask ourselves, and you as being doctors here, this is a question I think that you'll be able to relate to. How do you know when it's worthwhile to invest in someone's life? We're pleading to God at the beginning of the new year that He should give us another year of life. So that means we're asking God to invest in us that we should get another year of life. Now apparently He made the investment last year. We're all sitting here today. There's a lot of people, as you know better than I do, that are not sitting around anymore today. They're not breathing on this side of the world, they're down under, and they didn't make it through the year. So, they're not around. We are around. And we believe that we're going to be around on Rosh Hashanah as well. We're still going to be here. So that means that last year on Rosh Hashanah, Hashem, God, decided that it was worthwhile investing in your life for another year. And now we are going to bargain with Him once again and ask Him, Make the investment a second time. For some of us it's 30 years, or 40 years, or 50 years, or 60 years, or... Well, we'll leave it at that. More. And Hashem is investing every single year in our life. So, if I ask a room of doctors, how do you know when you have a patient that's sitting in front of you? His situation is very tenuous. The, the vitals are not looking so good. Maybe the heart, is, heart, bait, read, bait, heart rate is erratic and his, his uh, blood, blood pressure is up and down and all the things that you know much better than I do. How do you know when it's worthwhile to invest your time, your energy, your skill set, your wisdom, your understanding, when it's worthwhile to invest everything into this person's life? Okay, you tell me I'm a doctor, Hippocratic Oath, I have no choice. Whoever comes before me, i got to start putting in my best. Okay, that's probably all true. And if they find out that you give up on patients and you don't save every patient, so you're not going to be sitting here by the next lunch and learn, and then we're going to have to eat more pizza. So, but what, as a human being, as someone that is sensitive to the life that is coursing through the veins of the patient that's sitting in front of you, what is that thing that you see that tells you it is worth my time and my effort and my while right now to put everything I have into this person to try to guarantee that their life is going to continue? Even when they come into the ER and there's blood spewing everywhere and there's guts that are sticking out and there's screaming and there's yelling. How do you know? So I'm not a doctor. I can only answer what I think. And that is that when you see a vital sign of life in the person that is in front of you. When you see that there is a breath that is still being taken and you can still hear, even if it's faint, but the beating of the heart. 
And you can still see that the facial features are moving a little bit. And when you ask them, squeeze my hand, ever so gently they squeeze your hand. Then your doctor, your mission is to give this person more life. And sometimes it means to save a life. Sometimes it means to prolong a life. Sometimes it means to extend and make their life more comfortable. Sometimes it means you're going to get their life back to a place even better than their health was before they walked into the hospital. But how do you know? If you see a sign of life. If you see a sign of life, it gives you as a doctor hope that this person, they can make it. We know what to do. We've seen it a thousand times already, maybe 10,000 times. I know all the procedures. I know all the surgeries. I know all the medications. I've got the best team of nurses around me right now. I got this call in this doctor and that one. And then six hours later after the surgery is done and they're in recovery, you know that if things don't go awry at this point, chances are, like the other thousand patients who went through it, they're going to be just fine. When you see life, it motivates you to give more life. Hashem comes and visits each and every one of us on Rosh Hashanah. And He says, you know, I invested in you last year. I looked at you on Rosh Hashanah, I looked at your family, I looked at your children, I looked at your life, I looked at your patients, I looked at people that are going to be affected by you in the up and coming year, and I decided I see so many vital signs of life, you are worth giving another year of life. Now he's coming back to see what his dividends are on the life that he invested in. And now we have to be able to show for ourselves what did we do with the year of life that Hashem gave us. There's probably nothing more frustrating as a doctor. When a guy comes in 426 pounds, he has carotid arteries, his veins don't circulate so well, and his heart is like popping out of his chest, and you do an emergency surgery, and you get the stents and a triple, quadruple bypass, octagon bypass, whatever bypass, whatever you have to do. And you sit with the guy after he comes to, and his wife is sitting there, and his kids, everyone's crying, and they're so thankful you saved his life. And you say, listen, Mr. Smith, you can't go on like this anymore. This eating uh, habit that you have of getting up to the 400 pounds, you're going to have to lose weight, and you have to start eating healthy, and you have to exercise. we got to get you down. Let's start with 300 pounds, and when you get to 300, we'll talk about 200 pounds. And the smoking, you got to stop the smoking. It can't go on anymore. Cigarettes, they're gonna, you didn't read what it says over there by the Surgeon General? That warning is reality. It's going to kill you. You, gotta, you can't barely breathe. And exercise and so on and so forth. And you just spent eight hours in surgery. You've spent all your energies. Your hands are aching. Your back is stiff. Your mind has been probing all of your secret medical books to make sure you're doing the right thing. And the guy says, yeah, yeah, doc, I understand. You're right, you're right, you're right. I knew it. Thank you for saving my life. I knew it. And three months later, the guy's rolled back into the hospital. Now he's 451 pounds. He's smoking three packs of cigarettes a day, and that's it. He's on the last breath of his life. How frustrating for a doctor when the patients come. You help them, and you save them, and you rescue them from their tragic life that they have, and then they don't listen to what you told them to do. And they don't take your advice, and they don't try to make themselves better. You're just the messenger. You're just the technician. But they have to take the responsibility for the lives into their hands. Sinwar. Yeah. Can you imagine what he's thinking? Could you imagine? Could you imagine? I'm sure he doesn't feel too doesn't feel very good. But that's a longer story. <laughs> Let's talk about us. And so Hashem is no less and even more than the doctor. We came in to Rosh Hashanah last year, probably fair to say we were quite spiritually out of shape. Not really in the best of condition, carotid arteries, souls that are covered up in, 
in uh, m- mucky stuff. Our mind might not be thinking, always doing the right things. We, our mouths are not always saying the right things. We're not always behaving and acting in the right way. Our character traits sometimes are very quick to lose our refinement. And God said, you know what, I'm going to give you another year. I'll give you another year to show me how you're going to take care of yourself. And take care of yourself doesn't just mean the New Year's resolution of I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to become healthy and I'm going to exercise, I'm going to eat right. Okay, we do have to take care of ourselves. You're doctors. I know the doctors are the healthiest. Six pieces of pizza. I know that's very healthy, Baruch Hashem. So the doctors, I, I, a lot of the guys that I taught over the years, they were doctors, they were going through their uh, residency and everything and studying and they, they sleep nothing. They live on caffeine, coffee, Diet Coke and candy bars. And these are the guys that are now taking care of everyone to tell you how to be a healthy person. Okay, Hashem knows. So Hashem looked at us and He said, you know what, I'm giving you another year. Take good care of yourself. Take good care of your neshama, your soul. Take good care of your midot, of your character traits. Take good care of the challenges that arise in your life. Be strong and courageous. Overcome them because you can. Be more patient. Be more kind. Be more compassionate. Speak nicely to your wife and to your children. That's what I want to see for the up and coming year. So now we come. He's, he's rolling us in on Rosh Hashanah, on the gurney over here. The question is, how do we look after a year? Do we look remarkably better? We followed the doctor's advice. We went and we exercised and we trimmed ourselves down on the things that were negative for us. Or is he rolling us back in and he says, Oy gewalt, what? I, for the persons who don't understand, Oy gewalt means, not, it's really, it's bad. It means really, what did you do the last year? I gave you another chance, what did you do? So, if we're being wheeled in on the gurney, and we're 400 pounds spiritually overweight, and our beautiful heart that God gave us has become a heart of stone, and it's, it's tough to get things in there right now, and the noble character that He gave us is not so noble right now, so then we have a chance on Rosh Hashanah to say, you know what Hashem, you gave me a chance last year, I realized I didn't use all the time that I could have in the best possible way, but I'm asking you to take a gamble. Take a chance again. And now that I understand a little bit better what you want, I'm going to be better this year. I'll exercise spiritually. Prayer is spiritual exercise. You know that the Rav Hirsch, one of the great commentators on, on the Chumash, on the Torah, he says... Why do we cry when we pray sometimes? Sometimes, you know, you pray and you cry. He says, tears are the sweat of the soul. When you work out your soul during prayer, and you get to a place where you actually have some emotions, and you're in tune with your heart, and your feelings, and your emotions, and your connection to Hashem, and you start crying, tears are the sweat of the soul. So that means that you know that I'm actually working it out. I'm working out. If you got tired, you're working on a certain thing. Maybe you have a bad character trait, cast anger. And you scream and you yell, and you know, every nurse stays out of your way. When you walk into that ER, into the operating room, everyone knows just stay out of the doctor's way because if you say the wrong thing, you do the wrong thing, you're going to get the roar and the wrath that he has. Let's say you want to work on that. It is not easy to go from being a person of anger to being a person who controls their anger. You have to bite your lip and your tongue. It's a good thing you're in the hospital, you can get stitches afterwards, a thousand times over the year, not to allow the words of anger to fly out of your mouth. And it hurts, it's hard work. But when it hurts, that's how you know that you're taking care of yourself. If everything was always easy, peachy keen, as they like to say, but you know, it's like, and like the, the young generation today, and the jobs that they're looking for, they're not looking to be doctors right now. Doctors, hard work. You might have to give up a night's sleep. You might not make as much money as you thought. You might not get any gratitude. You might end up getting sued, God forbid, because one thing led to another, and so on and so forth. So they'd rather just be like some, you know, TikTok star, 
who sits in their bedroom under their covers and records themselves rubbing peanut butter all over their face and laughing, and then everyone says, wow, this person, they're the new star of the world, great. That's the kind of life that they would like to lead. You've chosen a much harder life, a life of hard work. And Hashem says, the hardest work in the world is the work that one does on their own personal life. The spiritual, emotional, symbiotic life that Hashem has given us. And when we work on that, when we do that, so then God says on Rosh Hashanah, Shh, look what you accomplished this last year. I remember last year at the time of Rosh Hashanah, you were such an angry person. You worked on yourself. You're not perfect. You don't overcome it completely, but you know what? I'll give you another year to work on it. I remember that the things were going on at the beginning of the year and everybody was so nervous, what's going to be in Israel and this and that. And you decided every day, five minutes, you're going to pray for the safety of the Jews in Israel. Wow, says Hashem. That is something special. I'm going to give you credit for the five minutes every day that you prayed. Maybe this year you'll bump it up to six minutes or seven minutes or eight minutes and so on and so forth. The little things that we can do with our life to show God that we appreciate the life that he has given us. Just like the patient who walks out alive and you've given them the long list of all things they have to do to take care of themselves. If they come back years later and they show you, I'm, say, I'm healthy, I'm fit, I'm trim, doctor, I'm eternally grateful for everything you did and I took good care of myself, for you as a doctor, that's called nachas. That's pleasure. That's the greatest feeling in the world. You actually had someone who you saved their life and they listened to you and they're living today because of your efforts. So to Hashem says, you know what? My nachas, my pleasure, is when I give you a year of life and I see the way that you use it. There's a, a beautiful story and I think we'll end with this. There was a, a family, a religious family, who was living um, at the time in, I believe in Philadelphia, and in, 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 they were living in somewhere, Baltimore, Silver Spring, and they had a child that was born, and the child was born premature, and it was very, very sick when it was born, and had to undergo multiple surgeries and, and infancy stages to be able to survive. And it was touch and go, touch and go, touch and go. And lo and behold, with the graces of God, the baby ended up surviving the surgeries. It started getting stronger and better. And after many, 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 many months of being in the NICU, finally the baby was released. And then after many months of healing, the baby was able to have a, a brist, be able to have a circumcision. And this, these parents were eternally grateful to the doctors in this NICU for everything they did. And they sent a note, and they sent uh, platters of food and of, of candies, you name it. They were so grateful to the hospital staff, the doctors, the nurses, all of the hard work they put in to try to save the baby's life, and they were successful. It was an eternal gratitude. So, but they felt that they're not doing enough. How are they going to show that they really appreciate what these doctors and the nurses did? So they went to their great rabbi, whose name was of El Yisvei, one of the leaders of, of Jewry here in America. And they asked him, what should we do? How could we show them our gratitude that we have? So he said, you know, we sent them a card, and we sent them platter, and we sent them food. He said, the food comes, and the food goes. You send them flowers, the flowers are going to die. He says, I want you to do the following. Every year on your son's birthday, I want you to bring him back to the hospital and I want you to show him to the doctors and the nurses who helped to save his life and show look what you accomplished and so every single year when this boy was one years old and he was two years old and he was three and he was 13 year old bar mitzvah they brought him back and much of the staff as you probably know still on the floor doctors still there and they would show him every year, doctor, look what you did. You helped to give our son life, and he's still thriving and alive today. And those doctors told the parents, in all of our years of being doctors, everybody sent cards, everybody sent gifts, everybody sent flowers. But the biggest gift of all is to see that the life that we invested in 
is still here and still alive. So as we come to Rosh Hashanah, all we have to do is present ourselves. And if we're proud of the work that we did in the last year, how we became better in our Jewish life, great. We have so much to show for. If we feel that we have to work a little bit more, everybody can always do a little bit more, tell Hashem, you know what? I'm going to try harder this year. You invested in me last year, and I didn't even understand last year what a gift you're giving me. Now that I understand better, trust me, I'm going to take advantage of the gift even more. And next year in Rosh Hashanah, you'll see, you'll see what I'm going to present to you of all the hard work, all the effort, and all the growth that I made. In this year of 5785 on the Jewish calendar, it should be a year that is filled with blessing, not only for us, for all of the Jewish people. It should be filled with health, it should be filled with happiness, it should be filled with peace for the Jewish people in Eretz Yisrael, in the land of Israel, for the Jewish people in France, and in Europe, and in America, all over the world. And we should have the ultimate peace, which is a life that we know finds favor in the eyes of the Almighty Himself. Shana Tova. I'll see you next year, and it should be a good year for all of us. Shana Tova.